And this is the Irish Fun Runner, and I'm uh, making a video today. I'm uh, just back from training a little while ago. It's had my lunch there. I had uh, some uh, spaghetti, some uh, sauce with a uh, tomato sauce with some uh, herbs and uh, onions and stuff like that. Uh, some tomatoes, some sweet potato, and some what's it called the uh, kale. Right, so I'm going to talk to you about the training today. Today did not go well. My track session at uh, Irish Town Stadium. Things have been going well for me. I mean, I ran. You know, I told you about the session I did um, last week. I was doing two by a K and four eight hundreds, and I was doing the first four of those like close to what the leader was doing. He's doing sixty nine second lap pace, and then last two I fell off the pace a bit. And on uh, Wednesday I was doing the tempo two by two mile with some strides at the end. I was doing five fifteen five twenty mile pace, which is good. Um, I was feeling great. And uh, today I was looking for more of the same, but that didn't happen. I was doing a track session. Most of the, most guys in my club are, are uh, well, a few of them are, well, some of them are injured. A few of them are doing a race in um, Belfast today for the uh, Mary Peters track in the Irish Miners Club. And so, yeah, it was, looked like for a while, like I was going to be the only one at training because I was waiting there. But uh, Paul O'Donnell came up, so I had one person to train with. So we did the warm up, we did the drills, strides. Uh, no, we didn't just try actually, we skipped the strides. Because he's in a bit of a rush to get, he wants to get to work for two, so he's in a bit of a rush. Um, so I did, um, so we did uh, 2k of efficiencies, which at the first felt easy. We're doing like 35 seconds for 200 and 45 seconds for 200, that felt good. And then we're doing just four by one kilometer, and we're doing, um, you think, uh, not three minutes. I was very close to Paul mostly, but then for the last one, he just got away from me, and my legs just too sore and then we were doing more 2k more efficiencies but after one lap it just dropped out I felt like my legs were just too sore and yeah that's what happens you know running is like this people imagine before it's like a roller coaster or, or running up a mountain even you go up 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 you, you make gradual gains you keep improving you keep improving then you start to level off and eventually you start gradually going down I think that's what happened to me today I mean I was a little bit slower than I was last Saturday, so it's probably starting to go into the decline then, and then kept go, tr kept trying to push it and kept going further down. Now I feel like I just need to ease off. I've eased off the miles a little bit this week, so I did a ten mile on Wednesday, mile on Wednesday. Should probably just done seven or even six. So I was thinking that the only way I do that stop sorry. The only way I do that miles this week, I'll also probably do lower intensity. So I was thinking, well, I was supposed to sign up for the nationals yesterday. Well, I'd be too late to sign up now. But if, if I don't, if I can't sign up for the nationals, I'll probably do try to break the uh, Cam T Parkman record. I did last September. I was 18 seconds off the record. It was six seconds per mile. Uh, slightly less, probably like five and a half. And um, I feel like I can break that record. I need to ease off. So I was thinking maybe on the session during the week, Tuesday or Wednesday. A bit easier in the tempo. Instead of doing 515, 526 minute mile pace, even though I'll probably feel like going a bit slower. Um, or sorry, I feel probably will feel like going a bit faster, but I'm just, it's going to be one of those sessions where you're just going to have to hold myself back and say, no, we have to be fresh for our race. Sorry, we do not want to risk anything. I probably might have to cut down the miles, mileage even more for our tape or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's me. Uh, that's my plans for now. So yeah, that's that's the thing with athletes. You know, it's never all um, plain sailing. It's never all sunshine and butterflies. Whatever, whatever they say. It's you get your good moments, you get your bad moments. And um, I had a few good moments there. Today was a bad moment, and I, I know, but I know what to have to do. You have to respond to that in a sensible way, and just be smart enough to realize you can't just keep pushing. If you keep pushing, you're just going to go further and further down, and you're going to be really badly burnt out. And I'm probably won't last a track session if I do that. Track season, I should say. And, alright, so that's enough about that. Um, um, I was training today, my um, coach was asking me to do a race tomorrow, a 5k race, but you know, I'm in no state to race that now. I mean, I told him at the end that I'd uh, given a miss. I you know I felt kind of bad about doing that because I'm letting the team down a bit, but you know, you have to be selfish and flex, you can't just. You know, you know you're not going to do yourself any favors going out there. Just embarrass yourself because of the way my legs are. We're having a really crap time, and um, you know I don't want to do that. You know I feel like that would affect my ego because you know people 
you know, the raise the result would be up online, and you know, I don't want people to know me to look it up and say, oh, the Mark Malloy guy, he ran crap time that day, he's crap. Because that's the way it is. You always want to run well in the races. And I was thinking, like, you know, you want to run good times. You want to people. You want people to be able to go you and, and see you run good times and all that. Because you know, people might uh, question the training I'm doing, saying that all oh, stuff I'm doing is wrong. But you feel like if you can run well in the races, then you kind of silence your critics, if you know what I mean. Even though like nobody cares, but you know you might get the odd person who does care. I mean. Yeah, I mean, some, some person might say, oh, what you're doing in training is crap, yeah, well, that easy running, you need to be doing HIIT to run faster, you need to run fast to train, run fast in the races, but then if I can back that up with good times, then I can kind of contradict them, say, no, look, I'm mostly easy running, and sure, look, like, I can run faster time than you, sure, you're only running, like, 22 minute 5k, and you keep burning out and getting injured, so it's obviously not doing yourself any good. Some people might be wondering, thinking that going a professional in any sport is, uh, it's like a dream, it's great, but if you're going to ask me would I like to become a professional runner, my answer would be no, because that's the thing, if all you're doing is running, rest, you're trying to do everything you can to recover quickly and do all that, then, you know, you're, you're going to become obsessive, it's going to be like your life, and you just, it's not, it's not healthy, it's like something else in life, you know, it's good to have a, I think it's good to have a job and just train in your free time, so then, you know, you're not thinking about your training all the time, there's, there's more to life than just running. And um, there's a guy I'm trying to get over here on the computer. His name is what? Yuki Kawachi, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, uh, password in. Okay, so try to get his name here. Uh, Yuki. Oh no, I that wrong. Okay, uh, Kawachi, that's the name. Yeah, so he's 30. He's, um, good, he's good enough to become a professional runner. He runs the marathon at 208, 14, and so 2013. 26. Bit young to be reaching your, um, Marathon peak, but anyway, he's um, he works full time. He uh, trains some like two hours a week, or two hours a day, dude, not two hours a week. So there's his uh, marathon PB. He's a uh, half marathon the year before, 62 minutes, 29th, 10k, 13th of day for the 5k. Though his marathon's probably his best, isn't 350 for the 1500. Uh, try to get some of his training methods uh yeah, he works as a, I think a civil servant, I read somewhere, he does, he works nine and a half hours a day on top of training, and you know, he can still compete at a high level, and he feels like he doesn't want to be a professional, because if he, these all these professionals, they want to give up running as soon as they re, uh, go past their peak, like he said, he's heard of people who say, oh, I don't, uh, who a professional runner is saying, oh, I don't like running, I just, um, I just do it to make money, it's like work, I'm going to quit as soon as... As soon as I pass my peak, and he said that's very sad because running is something that's meant to be enjoyed. And if, if you're not enjoying it, it's not good. It's so I, I admire this guy. He um he looks like a guy who'll just keep running for as long as he can until he can't run physically can't run anymore. Hopefully that won't be for a long time. He's thirty. He'd like to think he'd go on a lot longer. Uh, Japanese elite runner starts a record for half marathon suit. Yuki Kawachi took nearly 18 minutes off the previous mark, but the course wasn't certified. Unconventional approach to distance running. He had to tell Lexi on Saturday when he ran while wearing a suit. <laughs> that was, uh, when was that? Uh, 2016. Running in a suit. Man, now that's. Jesus, I don't know. I've seen. I once saw. Uh, a guy with a low standard running in a suit, he's probably in work, he didn't have time to get dressed or something, and, uh, or he had a lot of work to be wanted to do when he ran in a suit, so, but to, <laughs> Jesus, to do that in a suit, it's just amazing, he must be boiling, unless it's really cold, man, I guess, what did he do here, he's known for his, okay, we read that, he had to tell Lexi on Saturday when he ran, 
Cookie half marathon in 106.42 while wearing a suit. Yeah, I'd say his record was, um, his PB was 62, so, yeah, I'd say the suit did slow him down, but it didn't stop him from running. I mean, sure, you know, if, if you think it'd be fun to just run a suit some stage, then just run a suit, you know, it's about having fun. He's also known for his sheer volume of high-quality marathons he has run. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he runs a lot of marathons. He runs a like, marathon every month or something. He became the first person to run a sub, two sub, ten, two ten marathons in a two-week span. Whoa. Those marathons take a lot out of you. In fact, there's some people who say they don't run for a week afterwards, after marathon. I don't think he does that. I think he'd be back training the very next day, doing a recovery run, five hundred kilometers, eight hundred miles. It doesn't stop him. The existing of one twenty-four watts. That's kind of slow. Is that for a half marathon? Unofficially broke the record for fastest half marathon in a suit. Oh, in a suit, by seventeen minutes and fifty-nine seconds. That is impressive. I don't know. I'm not sure. Did he just do that for the sake of it, just for the fun of it, or was he just generally in a rush or something? I don't know. Cookie is no certified course. So this won't be an official Guinness World Record. Kawachi told Japan running after the race. I'm glad that I could break the Guinness World Record unofficially. I got pretty sweaty and tired out there, but the people along the course loved it. Six days before Kwachi's well-dressed run, he finished 7th at the Le Lake Biwa Manichi Marathon in 2.11.53. Because there are generally no financial incentives for breaking Guinness World Records, they tend to be set by non-elite runners. Uh, put serious money on the line, though, and it's fun to imagine how fast the world's best runners could be run dressed as Elvis or pushing a runner running stroller. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, elite runners are so obsessed with the the money. I think that can take away the fun of running. I mean, so obviously he just probably thought it'd be fun running in the suit. Uh, but other guys would be like, oh yeah, it's fun, but geez, I'm not getting paid. Why would I bother doing that? That's uh, not him. See, try to read more about this guy. He, you know, I, I look up to this guy. I hope he can keep running his and uh, keep enjoying it as long as possible. Oh man, is there anything more about him? The articles. <laughs> articles. JAF, I guess that means Japanese Athletics, something, I don't know, Federation. Kawachi for his first, oh yeah, Yuki Kawachi, this was 2016, late 2016, so about, uh, what, six months ago, sorry, six months ago, six and a half. Yuki Kawachi based her at the 2100 and suffered a cramp last year, I missed out, oh yeah. This is, Yuki Kawachi, 26, is a top marathon runner, but he defies the conventional wisdom of the sport in Japan. Oh, still a bit of time left. Kawachi is known as a citizen runner because he works full-time at a public night, night high school in States of a prefecture, while well, most top runners. Yeah, night school. These are it's all during the day. It's like nine to four, half eight to half three, quarter to nine to quarter to four, that type of thing. Quite, uh, yeah, he's known as Cisner because he works full time, yeah. I would drop out from the elite course for marathon runners. All right, so he was in that course, but he dropped out. Fair enough. Top runners after graduating from university with a highly competitive running club usually get hired by a company with a corporate running team. While receiving an offer from one such company when he graduated from uh, Gakushuan Gakushuan <laughs> University, Koachi decided he would rather work as a public servant. Thumbs up to you. In 2010, he ran in the Tokyo Marathon as a non elite runner, but finished fourth overall and third among Japanese. Yeah, you know, he started doing marathons at 22, so that's a very young age. To be honest, I think he probably should have started running the marathon a bit later, I mean, 22, because, you know, he reaches, that's his PB from the age of 26, that's very young for the marathon. I think he probably went better off sticking to the fight in the 10 game a bit longer, even if he's not as good at those distances, and just keep, reach your um, marathon peak at an older age, at least at the age of 30, reach your peak then, so, yeah, I think 26 is a bit young, but anyway, look, he's, I'm sure he's happy with himself. Uh... The race was my turning point in the world. I recognised I could compete through my own way of training. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap it up there. We're nearly out of time. So, um, this is the the Irish Funner. Please uh, comment, like, subscribe. Give a dislike if you want. Uh, I haven't got one dislike. I like to get one. Just, you know, I like people to be honest about it, you know. Uh, it, it shows you where I stand. Because if I just get a view and no like or dislike, I don't know whether you like it or not. So, anyway, um, so that's it.